everyone, it's Jackie from Watercolor Gypsy Art and Wellness and today we are going to be reviewing the Karen Dosh 15 set of Studio Gouache. And this set of gouache is extremely interesting to me because it comes in pans and not in tubes. They do give you a tube of white, but the other 14 colors are in pans, which is unusual. Usually gouache comes either in those jelly cups now that you've seen in my past Hemi Gouache review or in tubes. So I'm very interested to see how the gouache will react uh, being in a pan. Now, for those of you that know Karen Dosh as a brand, it's a Swiss company. They were founded, I think, in 1915, if I remember correctly. And they started out as a company for writing instruments and then branched out into art supplies. Two of their most popular art supplies are Neocolor 2s, which are described as a water-soluble wax pastel, which is a fancy way of saying they're a water-soluble crayon. Um, and these are artist grade out of the 124 colors, I think only 12 of them are fugitive, which means the other 114 are light fast. So you could use these and you could sell your work and not worry about it fading. So these are probably one of my favorite mixed media products, but we're not reviewing those today. I just wanted to mention them because uh, they are something that Karen Dosh is well known for. Another thing that Karen Dosh is very well known for is their luminance artist grade colored pencils. And I have to say, as, as someone who doesn't use colored pencils often, I don't enjoy the time it takes. These pencils are amazing. They are very expensive, but they are worth every penny. They are smooth, they blend easy, you can layer. They're great. Anyway, so having that information that I know that products that I have used from Karen Dosh have been phenomenal, I was very surprised to find the set on Amazon for less than $40. I think I paid $33.47 or something like that. Um, and like I said, I was very interested to try out a gouache set that was already in pans and not in tubes. So let's get to it. Now, this set comes with a little inf informative pamphlet. It gives you some techniques that you can do with the gouache. And it shows uh, their gouache studio line. It also mentions their acrylic paint. Not sure why, um, but they come with that. Now, they come with five mixing areas. Mm. This one big mixing area in the middle with the big red Karen Dosh symbol kind of is not my favorite thing, but we'll see how it works out. Um, I like to see my colors as I mix them and I feel like with that big red square that might become an issue um, if I'm trying to see my colors I'm mixing and there's a bright red under there. So I didn't know the colors that came in. There was no... There's no information about the colors that come in this. So I had to go online and I had to go on the Karen Dosh site and print out the Studio Gouache color chart because if you take these out, you won't see the name of a color. You will see a number. So I had some. I had um, to correlate these numbers to something, right? So I got the 15 and I got the names of the colors. So. First thing we're gonna do, like we always do, is we are going to swatch these out. I'm very interested <laughs> still to see how these are gonna work. They're, they're tight in there. I checked this, they're, they're not coming out. So um, I was expecting them to pop out of the pans, but they, they're tight in their pans, they're packaged beautifully, and they come with a size eight synthetic watercolor brush, which is, kind of perfect for gouache with this level of stiffness. It's not super soft and it's not super rough. So let's get going with the swatching. So as I swatch, I'm going to swatch maybe one or two in real time just to give you my immediate feedback and then I'm gonna speed it up so you don't have to watch me swatch all of these colors out. So I'm gonna start with the lemon yellow. And just immediately as I touch that down, um, my brush is, is loaded with color. Zoom in a little bit. That's a little better. Yeah, I like that better. So they re-wet. Oh my God. 
Okay, well, uh, I have no qualms about using <laughs> about using uh, pan gouache right now because they're they're creamy. They rewet wonderfully. I'm using very little water on my brush, and they're com the paint is coming right up. So this is a perfect travel set. Now I'm moving on to just yellow. The first one was a lemon yellow. I have to say, they're creamy. They're very opaque. I'm enjoying swatching them out. I thought I was going to have to fight the pans, but you don't have to fight the pans. And the brush is really good. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. Okay, well they swatched out beautifully. Um, now let's just go over real quick the colors that are in this set. We have a lemon yellow, we have a yellow which is kind of like a cadmium yellow medium, we have vermilion, we have carmine lake, which I would equate to a neutral red. It's not too cool, it's not too warm. Um, it's definitely not as dark or not as cool as alizarin crimson. It's a nice medium red. Now this is magenta. This looks like hot pink to me. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera like that, but this looks like hot pink. This must be a fugitive color just looking at it. Um, let me try to go over it. Yeah, it's, um, it's like a very, very, very uh, bright fluorescent pink, but it's labeled as magenta. There's brown which is a, uh, in between a burnt umber and a burnt sienna. It's not as dark as burnt umber, it's not as red as burnt sienna. Ochre, which is just your standard yellow ochre. This is, what is this color? This is emerald green. Yes, this is the emerald green. It's like a light lime green. Malachite green. Um, it's a very, it's a bright sap green. It's a sap green with some extra yellow in it. I wouldn't go as far as calling it a phthalo green. It's a little phthalo like, but it's its own color. Then we have, is this labeled the cyan No. This might be the malachite green. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five, this is brown, this is ochre. This is yellow green. Ooh, sorry guys, I mixed it up because it's not really in order here. I had to label which order. So this is yellow green, which is a, a light lime green. And then this is an emerald green, which is appropriate for the color. It's not really as, as blue as thalo, and it's not as earthy as um, sap green. This is malachite green, which is like a turquoise color. This is cyan, which would I would definitely equate to a thalo blue. This is your ultramarine. This is your gray, and this is your black. And then I took a tiny bit of white on the edge there, and I covered up my pencil line just to see how opaque it was. And it's pretty opaque. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the colors in this set. I can tell it's a student grade set because um, some of the colors, they're not consistent. Some of the colors are very opaque, and I guess those are ones that have some white in them, and some of them are mm, not very opaque, like this, this uh, magenta that's really like a hot, hot pink. I don't know if it's coming up on camera, but... Yeah, it's not very opaque. It's more of a watercolor, and no matter how little water I use, I can't get it to not be that opaque, that transparent. So that is a either a positive or a negative. I'm not really sure. It depends how you look at it. I'm gonna just mix this with some some of that yellow that warm yellow and see what kind of orange I get with this. Now it does mix to a beautiful orange. 
If you're looking for a less intense orange than the vermilion, it does mix into a nice orange, but then again, again, it is like in between a gouache and a watercolor, I would say. Some of them are definitely gouache-like, like the brown, the ochre, the gray, the yellows, the black, the white, obviously. Um, this carmine like the vermilion. Most of them are gouache like, and some of them just seem to be very watercolory. And it's easy to control how much you're putting down with the pan setup. So to me, that is that's a plus. I like that I can control my opacity. But when I use gouache, I'm looking for that strong opacity that illustratory punch of a color. So that's that's what I look for in my gouache. So here's just my honest opinions of the set. This isn't a sponsored video. I feel like it's a great set to have to go out in the field and do and play an air with and play around with and do sketchbook stuff. I don't know if I would use it for like my fine art um, stuff that I would put in a gallery or sell, but Overall, for the price, for less than $40, you're getting 15 colors and you're getting a tube of white in those 15. So it's a good value and I can't really say I'm upset with the purchase. So let's go ahead and move on onto a painting. So I'm going to take you through the drawing phase of this because I drew this um, before I did this review. This is a sketch, a well, an illustration from, if you watched my previous videos of my art haul, from this book. The Studio Ghibli Art of Kiki's Delivery Service. And I used this as my reference photo. This is what I'll be using as my color reference as well. Now you can see in here, Gigi the cat, that's his name, <laughs> Gigi. <laughs> He's really stuffed in the center and the binding. So I couldn't get a good reference photo of Gigi. So you'll see me struggle a lot in the drawing that's upcoming. I sped through it because the drawing really isn't the highlight of this video. So let's move on to the drawing and then we'll come back to our painting. Okay, so I made the drawing a speed drawing because it wasn't the focus of the tutorial, but if you guys would like more uh, elaborate drawing tutorials, just leave a comment below and I, I have no problem doing them in real time. So I'm using a 2B pencil on just some Aqua B watercolor paper and I blocked in my shapes very, very, very lightly. And this is why I used a 2B pencil because I can block in my shapes very, very lightly and they're soft enough to erase with just a kneadable eraser and not ruin the paper. Here you see me going over my lines uh, to define them more, make them darker, make them more a little bit permanent. And I left Gigi for last because Gigi was in the crease, the cat, the black cat was in the crease of the image. I'm using a reference photo from the Studio Ghibli Art of Kiki's Delivery Service um, book that I had shown in a previous video. And I'm just going around getting the details and trying to, like I said, block in those big shapes first. Like, and you'll see me struggle with the cat a lot because I didn't have a good reference photo for him. Um, in the image, he was kind of crouching down and scared, but because I couldn't really see him that well, I decided to use a different, rep a different reference photo when I got back to him. Now here, I'm really defining my shapes and going over anything that I thought was wonky and just trying to get the best image in. I made some lines for where my shading is going to be just to indicate where that transition will go. Even though in gouache it's pretty easy to make those transitions, I still wanted to know where they would go because the book is pretty big and I'm probably going to want to take it off of my table or put it to the side when I'm done. Now I'm still working on defining those those shapes uh, with a darker part of my pencil and then once I'm happy with my initial drawing and my initial sketch I move on to outlining her with a micron and I'm just going over pretty much everything I drew her bag her feet her broom Gigi which I was really not happy with but you know it's a little black cat and I'm working very very small this was a birthday gift for my friend so I was just trying to get it in there and that's pretty much it. I went over it and then I erased the lines and there she is. 
Okay, so I got some fresh water, so my water's not all muddy. I have my reference image right next to me. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to speed paint this and voiceover, or if I'm going to do this in real time. Depends how long it takes me. I might do like a half and half, where I speed through some of it. So I'm seeing the background is very blue on top and it goes into like a turquoise. So I'm going to grab some of the cyan color. Put it in my mixing palette. Oh, I'm using an angular brush for the background. And I'm going to grab a touch of black. A little more black. A little bit of a glare where I'm standing. And I'm going to start at the top with this color. And already my tape is coming up, so this is, this might be tough. Okay, so I decided to just do a voiceover for this because it took me way longer than expected. Um, so I started in with the black and the cyan mixture right in the background, and I had forgotten that I had put white, white gouache down to cover some areas and to fix around the cat's tail. So I really struggled to get that smooth background look. As you can see now, I'm painting in the uh, by the cat's tail, and it's blending and lightening that. Uh, dark blue color that I had mixed so I did the best I could and I knew I was going to put stars over it so I didn't stress about it too much so I got most of it blocked in and I alternated between the angular and a few rounds I had the eight round that came with the set a, a two round and a four round that I just kept alternating through depending on what area of the painting that I was working I went a lot smaller when I started working on her bag and for her bag I had mixed a brighter orange because the vermilion was too red and too vivid for me. Um, mixing colors with this set was a little difficult. Uh, keeping the pans clean was also a little difficult because I didn't uh, wash my brush in between mixing colors because I kept feeling like I was losing the color if I washed it in between and it wasn't really transferring to the palette well. The big red Karen Dosh logo wasn't an issue at all. Uh, what was an issue was getting the paints from the pans to the mixing area. Um, right now you'll see me going in with a purplish color mixed with white. So what I did was I got the local color down and then for the most part I just mixed it with some white to get the, the highlight color. Now she was mostly in mid-tones, so this was color-wise a very easy painting to do. Because it was so small, I did struggle with seeing where I was painting. So, but I, I, I started to do that thing that we do. We uh, want everything to be perfect as artists. And at some point in this painting, I just let go of that and said, you know what, I'm just gonna paint it. And if I don't like something, guess what? It's gouache, I can fix it, I can go over it, I can paint a new color, I can mix a new color and paint over it like I did with her skin right here. Her uh, skin was a little bit of a challenge to mix because it was mostly white with very little yellow and very little red. Now here you'll see me going back over it with a micron and, and I'm an impatient person. Uh, so the Micron did not mix with the not fully dried gouache so well. I kept having to wipe the tip of the Micron off on my rag. But uh, over, no, overall, I did get it done. And painting with these paints wasn't too much of a hassle. It was almost like painting with any other gouache. I just had to get used to the pan arrangement of gouache which you know in the beginning frustrated me and then as I got used to it it was fine. Sorry for my head getting in the way so much with those fine fine details on such a small painting. I really really had to get up close and personal to it. Then with final touch after getting everything done, the shading, the painting, the re-outlining, I just went around with my angular brush and dipped it in some watered down white gouache and splattered it to look like stars and that really helped that background come together for me so you couldn't really see so much of the streakiness. Now for Gigi I just went in with a white gel pen and the micron to do his eyes 
And that was pretty much the whole painting right there. Like I said, I struggled a little bit, but overall I really enjoyed using the set and uh, I would totally use it again. And the reveal of removing the tape, my favorite part of any painting. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little painting. And if you want real-time tutorials, just let me know and I'll be happy to upload them. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little speed paint tutorial uh, and review of the Caran d'Ache 15 Cent Studio Gouache. Overall, I really like them despite how much uh, I had to adjust to use them. Um, they were great and, you know, it's, it's not, like I said, perfect, but it's, I'm happy with it and you know, there was nothing crazy about it. The only thing that I would be mindful of if you guys were to use the set is try to clean your brush in between color mixing because I didn't because I was a little lazy and my pans did get quite dirty. So I'm going to go over them um, and just clean them up. They, they clean up very easily. So I'm just going over it and that red is picking right up. But I'm also losing some pigment. So... You know, if you want to conserve your pigment, um, I would wash your brush in between mixes. Now, the like I said in the speed paint, I didn't wash my brush in between mixes because I felt like I w was losing all of my paint when I was washing my brush and it wasn't really staying on the palette. Um, so I chose to mix directly from the pans so I would get better color mixes. But that was uh, my personal preference. So, you know, if you guys check it out, you guys like this um, tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. The more my channel grows, the more I can give you tutorials. And I have a huge uh, series coming up soon on soft pastels. It's a four to five part informative workshop, completely free here on YouTube going over all, when I say all, I mean all of the artist grade pastels on the market. I'm really excited to uh, release this series for you. Um, it all started with that pan pastel unboxing that should be, um, I don't know if it's released yet. I think if it's not released by now, it will be released soon, but you have a lot of fun stuff coming to, for you. So if you want to be alerted of when that stuff is released, you can click the bell and comment and let me know what you think. All right, bye guys. Bye for now.